everyone. Hope you're doing really well today. I'm with Kali today again, and today we want you to look at the QL, Quadratus Lamborum. And I think Kali will agree with me that you get various kinds of individuals with the same scenario. Yes, I mean, you get so many different body types, and they're all spasming in the QL, but all due to different reasons. And so today we're going to look at a bit some of those reasons. Yes, absolutely. So let's first think about where is the quadratus lumborum. So we know it comes from the iliac crest. It comes up onto the lumbar vertebra. Really important, it attaches onto that last rib. As soon as anything is attached onto the ribs, you must know that when you are breathing, because we know there's movement in the ribs, the quadratus lumborum is affected. One of the things that it is really good at is keeping that last rib down when you breathe. So when you inhale, you've got this muscle here just holding that last rib down, keeping that stability in the rib cage through the quadratus lumborum. Understanding where it is and the diagonal angle of the fibers that it has will give you a really good idea of what movement it creates. So I want to show on Kali what the different movements are, and then let's analyze the quadratus lumborum. So you're going to be on your knees for me, Kali, facing sideways. All right. So, QL, we said. Iliac crest, you can take your arms to the front. Iliac crest, diagonally upwards onto the lumbar spine, onto that last rib. I want you to think about what do you think the quadratus lumborum would affect? It would affect the pelvic position, and it would affect the spine because it actually attaches the pelvis to the spine and even the pelvis to the ribs. So now, if we think about the position of the quadratus lumborum, we also have to take into account what pelvic tilts it will produce and when will it lengthen. On top of that, we have to remember that the quadratus lumborum also works when you are breathing. So if we go into an anterior pelvic tilt, the QL actually shortens in this anterior pelvic tilt, and it's one of the only muscles that is attached from pelvis to lumbar spine and doesn't continue all the way up, so it therefore affects the lumbar spine only. Now I want you to think an anterior pelvic tilter who has this shortened quadratus lumborum can you 100% say that that QL is tight? You cannot say that. The only way you will be able to know if that QL is tight, just put your hands on the bed for me, is you ask the client to flex the spine as much as they possibly can. And when you see that they struggle to get that flexion, we can now say, you have a tight QL, or you have tight back extensors, or you can't flex your spine, and you have neither. And this is exactly what we want to dive into in our spinal stability protocol. We can't put everything down to the muscles of the body. Even though there is no flexion happening in the lower back, we can't just target it and say we need to stretch the lower back muscles because everybody's spine is completely different. So one of the things would be, you're an anterior tilter, let's see how much you can actually flex your spine. Can you curve it up, 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 hold? If I look at Carly just in this position, and I don't think you can see it from there, is the right quadratus lumborum definitely has more tone than the left quadratus lumborum. So here we've got a bulge in the lumbar back. And let's not forget that we also have erectus spinae running over there. So you're not even 100% sure that it's just quadratus lumborum. You might find that there is additional work happening on the right side. How are we going to know this? We're going to look at things like lateral pelvic tilts. What are the pelvic tilts like? Is she possibly anterior with a lateral pelvic tilt? And that's why it's so much greater on the one side. Or does she do a specific sport that requires her to work that one side a lot more than the other side? So that's important. Okay, so that is looking at the flexibility of it. Or she can sit sideways, so you're going to sit on the bed there. And you're going to reach up and over to the one side. So yeah, yes, lats, yes, obliques, absolutely. Let's rotate, hold onto that bed. And now I want to know how much of a stretch does she get here by the quadratus lumborum. 
You're gonna compare that side. So what I'm aiming for is to get this hip down as she goes over. So I want you to pull it down. I want her to tuck her pelvis through and roll it back towards me to increase that stretch. Can you feel that? Yes. That's <laughs> cool. Okay. Open it out to the side and bring it all the way up. Let's compare her left hand side. So we know the right hand side had a bit more of a bulge happening there. I can already see that she's got more range on this side when she goes into lateral flexion. Super tuck, rotating around. How does that feel? Less tight. Less tight, okay. So we're gonna open it out to the side and gently bringing it up. So that's the anterior tilt. So now on your knees again for me, please. So in an anterior pelvic tilt, you can go there again, arms straight out in front of you. You can understand that the QL could possibly go into a spasm because you're doing what it does, which is that bringing that part of the pelvis closer to the rib cage. So yes, it can go into a spasm. However, when you have somebody who is in that anterior tilt and they collapse their spine onto their pelvis, so everything is like heavy and sinking down onto the pelvis like that, they compress the ribs down to that iliac crest and there they shorten it even more. So the QL might spasm when it is in a constant shortened position and it doesn't have any support from any other muscles around it. Now it requires a program that can focus on helping it release, helping it strengthen, and strengthening all of its frames around it so that it doesn't have to be so hypertrophic. What about a posterior pelvic tilter? So they are tucking the pelvis through, Carly is fairly good at that, and a real posterior pelvic tilter that really tucks their pelvis through a lot, they hang through with their pelvis, they hang on the front of the hip over here, and they really have this length happening at their lower spine. However, that length at the lower spine also has the spine collapsing on it. And that's why a posterior pelvic tilter, when you look at them, you might think that they are an anterior pelvic tilter because you see that little curve and ditch there in their lower back. But this long quadratus lumborum is holding that iliac crest up and the pelvis is dropping forward, and the rib is up here, so it's long, and nothing else is working. So the cue out says, where is everybody? I'm holding on, that's it. I need to let my boss know that I'm not happy, and it goes into spasm. <laughs> So now you have a QL that's long that's going into a spasm. Maybe there's some SIJ issues happening. Maybe there's too much flexibility in the spine, hypermobility, low muscle tone. So now you think, well, this thing is in spasm. We need to stretch it, but it's so stretched. Now we have to design a program that slowly starts waking that quadratus lumborum up so that it can slowly start strengthening with all of its other frames. The back muscles work like this. When we just start training them immediately from being totally weak, totally flexible, they spasm. Because they don't have hamstrings like the glutes do to cheat for them. So the back extensors go, you're crazy, I don't like this, and I'm gonna go straight into spasm. That's your signal, you gave me too much. So we wanna design a program that helps that quadratus lumborum to be successful in its functions and to bring its frames in to assist it in helping to maintain a good pelvic position as well as a postural position to take the work away from it. Right, so you can put your hands over there. How do we know that it's super flexible? When she curves through here, which is not really going to happen with her, but they're going to get like a really long curve in the lumbar spine, a deep flexion in the lumbar spine, because they are true posterior pelvic tilters and they like that posterior pelvic tilt. But you get posterior pelvic tilters with nice flat spines over here. And when they curve through, there is no curve. So now we're looking at billions of people, we're trying to put them into four spinal boxes and it's impossible. We need to take sections of our biomechanics that we understand, our anatomy that we understand, in the toolbox in our mind and put the puzzle pieces together so that we can best help the client. Super important. The other way I've seen that it's super flexible is when Carly does those side stretches, 
she'll just be rotating, going over and feeling absolutely nothing happening. Right, lie flat on your tongue, please. So as Carly was saying earlier, when we were chatting, she said, when you look at people who are hyperactive, or let's not say hyperactive, let's say people who are super active, because then I would be hyperactive, yes. but I'm not hyperactive, <laughs> maybe a little bit, um, except when I'm sitting in a hanging chair, which is kind of get chopped out. Okay, so she was talking about people who are very active, and what are you saying about them, Carly, and their hip extension and stuff? In people, especially, um, I've seen in plenty of gyms, so when people train in hip extension, they tend to overactivate, overactivate their lumbar extensors, especially the QR. For example, just lifting the leg up, they would go as high as possible, spasming into that QR, and then they ask, I don't understand why my back is hurting, because I'm training. <laughs> mm. And then it's like... Huge. They're it's not the looking at alignment. It's yeah. the form is completely incorrect. It's so many things you have to think about, and just extending up into that position does not train your hip extensors effectively. Yes. and I don't think many people know that. Exactly. Unfortunately. <laughs> so one of the great things where we come in is we look at the form, the method that the client is using. What is their functional daily movements? When they train, what do they do? How do they sit? How do they stand? And this is going to give you great information. It's so difficult to give anybody any advice if you've never seen them stand, sit, or move. For me, the biggest thing is looking at what do you do for the longest period of your day? What do you look like when you're doing the one position for the longest time in your day? And like Carly says, so many sports people as well, and super active people, when they train, and they're training really hard, they are getting things like tight hip flexors, they are struggling with hip extension, which is why we dive into the hip stability protocol, and that means that they have to create that movement from somewhere. So you've got, you can like that on your tummy, 15 to 20 degrees of hip extension. If you have a hip flexor, that will get into its eccentric position, or flexibility in the hip flexor. Once you reach that 15 to 20 degrees, the change has to happen in the pelvis. So let's say Carly increases that, and the change is going to happen in the lower back, and the pelvis is going to tilt to increase beyond that range. So what is the range that you're asking that QL client to do, and what is happening in the front of their hip? Super important. If they're really tight in the hip, which is what Carly was saying now, and they lift their legs up into hip extension, it immediately goes into that lower back, even when they're at two degrees of hip extension. So this exercise ends up not even targeting into the hip extensors, which we need for this stability to help that QL a little bit, but it targets into the area that's already not happy. So we really want to have a look at how can we train this individual so that the quadratus lumborum can have a little bit of a vacation, or train the quadratus lumborum so that it can slowly but surely get stronger. Remembering that we're starting low load and eventually we're going to increase all back extension to a much higher load. Agreed? Cool. So we're going to look at various ways that we can get into the lumbar spine to create strength in the lumbar spine because we're always thinking about stretching the back, I'm feeling my back, should I be feeling my back? And when we're looking at people with QL issues or they've got SIJ and QL, you really want to look at the holistic sort of outlook on what's happening in the spine, the pelvis, what is their natural body type like, how do they spend their time during the day, and that's going to give you a lot of information about what you're going to do with their backs. Because, not flat, oh you are flat, put your arms <laughs> next to your sides. Okay, if I take her into normal back extension and I ask her to lift up into back extension, you can just go for it. Here we go, because we're strengthening the backs. But we've got this irritable quadratus lumborum. This is going to irritate it. I need to come up with something else. Even if I take it a little bit up, so you can bring it up a little bit, and all of this isn't working and they're collapsing the lower back, that's also not going to help. So I can do a gentle change. You can put your head on your hands for me, please. And I can teach them to just activate lower abdominals, although the whole abdominal is activating, I get it, but it's pulling that pelvis through. 
maintaining that position just to give a little bit of support anteriorly to the back extension, okay? And now, gently, you can bring your arms next to your sides again, gently hovering the back up. So we have a little bit of length happening while it is also being asked to work. Does that make sense? Cool, gently lower all the way down. So, quadratus lumborum isn't just you have a spasm, this is exactly what we're going to do. It's all about the individual. You can sit up for me. It's all about the individual. What body type they have, what movements are they doing every single day, how much flexibility do they have in their body, what sport do they do, what lateral tilt do they have, if they have one. Is there any rotation that's happening in the pelvis at all? Maybe. Lateral tilt clients especially have a, mm. a very tight QL that spasms when you try to work or stretch it. So. Yeah. And think about that one QL that seems to be hyperactive and you do basic back extension or any back extension work. That side is always kicking in. They'll say to you, I just feel it on the right hand side. So what can you do to make sure that they feel it on the left? That's exactly what we're going to be learning in the Spinal Stability Protocol. We hope to see you there in February. Take care.